731. It's called Garrett Honeywell 731 turbo fan engine TFE. And as you can see from the front end, you have the fan, and then you have the core engine in the back here. You can see that um, you have a gearbox here, and then you have the four stage axial compressor, followed by the centrifugal compressor, the high pressure centrifugal compressor back in here. As we see through here, it, you can't really see it too well, you have the first stage of the axial compressor and you have the stators. Remember stators are the stationary veins in between the rows of axial discs that rotate. These take the uh, compressed air off of the first stage. They form the air to go on to the second stage of compression, the axial compressor, and then goes down through the various stages, the stator, the axial compressor rotational uh, disc. There's another stator. Then you have the uh, final stage of compression and the stator. And the air is, the compressed air is funneled down through here and onto the uh, center of the centrifugal compressor, which then by centrif centrifugal uh, compression pushes it out. And as we'll see, it um, that gives you a good example of the centrifugal compressor. We'll notice in here, when we talk about this later, how uh, the accessory section is powered by what we call a tower shaft going from here. In fact, you might see it going up here also, and it's going down here to the uh, starter, the generator, the uh, fuel pumps, the oil pumps, and various things of that nature that the engine needs. Now we can see the power section of the engine. The first section was the gas generator section. What's the gas that's generated? It's the air, the compression, compression of the air as it goes through here. Remember now, what do we call the, uh, the area that surrounds the centrifugal compressor? We call it the diffuser, right? It captures the compressed air and then directs it into the combustion can where it's united with fuel. It's initially lit up with igniters and then it's a continuous flame that goes into the can. So it goes, the air comes through here, turn 90 degrees, then push to 90 degrees into the combustion can. In fact, the air, as you can see, surrounds the combustion can all the way around through here and it goes into the combustion can through these small orifices or holes in the combustion can. It's ignited, and then because the pressure is so large on this side, it pushes the flame back down through here. And this is a fixed stator right here that directs the flames onto the first power turbine. As you can see, the flame expanding gas mixture between the jet fuel and the air comes back through here through the stators onto the first power turbine. Now this first power turbine is connected with a shaft right through here to the centrifugal compressor or the high pressure centrifugal compressor. That's important to understand. Those two, the turbine, high pressure turbine, and the high pressure centrifugal compressor are connected by a shaft. Inside that shaft are the power turbines, the other three power turbines here. They're called the low pressure power turbines, and they are connected through a concentric shaft going running through the middle of this shaft up to the axial compressors 
and onto the gearbox and into the fan at the front of the engine. So it's important to understand the concept of the two-spool engine. The two spools are the low pressure axial compressor at the front that has a shaft running right all the way back through and is tied onto these three power turbines in the back. That makes one spool. Remember a spool is a compressor with a shaft connecting it to a power turbine. This is a spool. This is the high pressure spool right here with a shaft connected to the high pressure centrifugal compressor in this 731 engine. So as we say stated before, there is a stator here that directs the expanding gases onto the first power turbine. Then they go through here. Some of the energy is lost as it powers that turbine, but then it's directed onto these stators and And as you can see, they direct it onto the first low pressure power turbine. We have another set of stators right here that direct it onto the next low pressure power turbine, and a third set of stators which direct it onto the third power turbine of the low pressure compressor. So, do you get the concept? You have concentric shafts. This is the outer shaft going here between these two. And then you have the inner shaft which connects these three power turbines to the axial compressor right at the front of the engine and through a gearbox onto the fan that produces the bypass air that goes past the core. Now, it's hard to see exactly, but this down in this area right in here, we have what we call the accessory section on the TFE. You'll have the oil pumps for lubrication. You have the fuel pumps for pressurizing the, and atomizing the fuel going into the combustion can. A number of things are back in this accessory section. Now, this accessory section is powered by a shaft that comes off of right this section here, right in front of the centrifugal compressor. It has a transition thing there. And there is a shaft that comes down here called the tower shaft through there and comes down here by a set of linkages and it powers the accessory section. The starter generator is down here also for electrical power. So this is a really important fact, and it's um, not illustrated well here, but let's just see what we can do. There, that's a little bit better. Gives you some idea of what the, where the accessory section is housed on these turbofan engines. Again, the tower shaft comes down through here, connects by a set of uh, rods and gears into this thing, and turns the uh, motive force for the uh, various pumps and the starter and generator for electricity. So let's just review. You have the fan at the front of the engine, which is powered by the low pressure compressor which is tied to a shaft going to the low pressure power turbines in the back. The shaft runs from here all the way up through, concentrically through that shaft, up to here, and then through here into a gearbox that transfers the force into turning the fan at the front of the engine. 
And of course, the air bypasses the core, goes through here and out into the, uh, the exhaust area. We have the exhaust core going through here, but the bypass air goes around the core. But still, like we said, at low altitude, that bypass air produces 70 to 80 percent of the thrust. At altitude, this core engine, the core thrust from here, produces 70 to 80 percent of the power to uh, at higher altitude. So that's an important factor to remember. And again, we have the accessory. It looks like the starter generator down here. And then the number of uh, oil fuel pumps and things that need, of that nature that need to be used to keep this uh, unit going. You'll notice that this high pressure centrifugal compressor turns quite a bit faster than the axial compressor because it's getting more energy on it and therefore it's able to turn it higher. Plus, it has to, it's the final stage of compression before it goes into the combustion can. And so uh, that's an important factor also. Again, this is powering the fan up front, so quite a bit of energy is, is uh, used to uh, not only power the axial compressors, but go into the gearbox and power the fan up front. So there's quite a bit of energy lost in the low pressure fan, uh, low pressure uh, compression area. Again, this is where the tower shaft goes from here down through the engine and through a set of gears and such is transferred over to this section of the accessory section where it is uh, used to power those pumps, starter generator, etc. This is a good example, a good video of the turbofan engine. We see the fan up front and we see the air entering, bypass air going past the core and quite a bit of the air going into the core engine. We see the axial compressors here with the stators in between. So we have three stages of axial compression. Then the high pressure air goes into the combustion can where it's united with fuel and ignited which goes out the back end here and we have a stator right in there. Remember the stationary thing and then we have the power turbines in the back. Two stage power turbines in the back. So this would be considered one spool one continuous spool with two power turbines in the back and three axial stages right here. So this is a one a one spool engine as opposed to the 731 which is a two spool engine with the axial and the centrifugal compressor going inside the concentric shafts. So I thought this you might find this an interesting uh, video of a turbo basic turbofan engine with just axial compressors, no centrifugal compressors.